know who they are. Okay. Just making sure. Thanks, man. So, uh, from both of your accents, I kind of gather you're not from around here. No, I'm actually from Alabama. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm now from the United Kingdom. I've heard of that. Yes, Wales. I was here. Yeah, I was born in Wales, and uh, I've actually been. Thanks again, Mark. Good time. Good time. Love you, Wales. Um, uh, yes, I've lived in Wales, England, Scotland, but never in Ireland. No, you don't want. Yes, and I always try to do Tom's accent, and I'm not very good at it. <laughs> Chicago! It's very good. <laughs> no, I can't. I'm not even, I'm not even uh, tempted. <laughs> well, clearly you two get along. Um, <laughs> Only in front of the cameras. <laughs> I literally called him this morning. I go, Tom, where are you? The fans are asking about you. The fans are lining up. He's like, oh, I'm at the gym. Um, I fancy you want to get some breakfast. I'm like, Tom, I'm here with the peeps already. They're waiting for you. I have a later call. I don't know what was happening. I, you, I had a proper panic, though. I was <laughs> looking at my finger and in my underwear. In my underwear just going, what? Well, I'm not ready. Yeah. Well, I, I saw the Netflix trailer, and it does need to So he needs to stay in the gym, you know? yeah? Hey, Tom, do you want to take off uh, the layer? Here's what I thought I'd do today, is that uh, when I come to these conventions, lots of lovely people bring t-shirts and, and, and items of clothing. So, I've, have, you, have you ever heard of the game, the, the children's party game, Pass the Parcel? Is that a British thing? Is that a British thing? It clearly is a British thing. <laughs> so basically, the kids all sit round in a circle, and uh, there's a big parcel, and the music plays, and when you pass it round, and when the music stops, whoever's holding the parcel has to take off the layer. Uh, but there's more than one that layer. That sounds so British. And in the middle of it, it's very British, yes. The parcel, and then you pass the parcel. Pass the parcel. Um, so what I've done today is I've got quite a few layers on, because I thought we could give a few things away. I was going to start. I was going to start with a hat, but I'm absolutely boiling. So can I start with the hat? Music, please. Thank you. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how we do this. Do you really? Am I allowed to walk amongst people? I think so. We can do it. If there's any music, we can do it when the music stops.
so. Oh, my turn. Are you still there? No. Uh, tell you what, this t shirt is from a show I did called Miranda. The, one of the mottos of Miranda was, uh, was from the, uh, the song What have you done today to make you feel proud? So, uh, everyone should feel proud that got our show back on the, back on the air. So, uh, you can have this one. I didn't start until I was about um, 17. 
I, I came late to it in school. I sort of, I, 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 really, I love sport, so I was, I wanted to do something to do with sport. I was never quite good enough at the sports I played to pursue them professionally. So I thought maybe I could be like, you know, the physio that runs on the pitch, because then at least I get that feeling. <laughs> So I was going to work in sports science, and then I I was doing uh, my A levels, which is like the, the higher end of uh, high school, your last grades that you do. And uh, I wasn't enjoying one of my subjects, so I dropped it. And my old English teacher was doing a theatre studies course, and she said, uh, "I I think you'd really enjoy theatre studies. I've got 12 girls and one boy thus far." And I went, "How many girls?" Um, so it wasn't necessarily for the right reasons that I started. <laughs> But, um, but I, you know, I went to a couple of classes and I absolutely loved it and, uh, and that was it really, that's where the love affair started. Now, you're, you're both TV veterans, you've opened up many TV series and all that, now you're on Netflix and I'm wondering, yeah, is, is, is working for Netflix different from working from a network or? Uh, well, it, it's interesting because like Warner, Warner Brothers make the show, so Warner Brothers make the show for Fox, and Warner Brothers make the show for Netflix. So, in that respect, it's not that different. Um, I think the, the biggest feeling that we got going to Netflix was I don't think any of us really had any idea how popular the show was uh, until we got cancelled. <laughs> Um, and I did Fox, I think. Yeah, we were really like the ugly stepchild that no one paid attention to on Fox. Yeah. And then when we got cancelled and you guys started tweeting, we're like, oh my god, people like us. Yeah. And, 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 you know, the, it, was, it, it sort of gave the show a whole kind of re, re boost of energy, a rejuvenation, really, because Netflix kind of made it very clear to us that they really wanted us to be there. And they were overwhelmed about how how much support the show had actually. Well, now that, now that you're not on network, and a few people asked me this on the way in to ask you guys, uh, is, is the show going to get, uh, I mean, it's already a sexy show, but is it, is it going to get even more sexy? You're going to see a lot more of it. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to objectify you. Too. Sort of, a lot of people were like, well now you're on Netflix and there's, there's no boundaries, is it going to become this, is it going to be much darker, is it going to be bomb? And I think one thing that we, we had to be really careful about was realising that the show that people had fallen in love with was, was one we didn't want to tinker with too much, we didn't want to change too much about it, because I think, I think you know, as you can see here, the, the show, one of the sort of overwhelming things about it is that it has such a sort of broad audience. You know, from kids right through to pensioners, it's it's it, it's got something in it for everybody, and I think that's because it doesn't go too far. It doesn't, it, you know, we try not try not to be vulgar, and part of, you know part of the fun of the character of Lucifer is a bit cheeky, and he doesn't quite go all the way, but he's very suggestive, um, very suggestive. <laughs> So we've sort of, I think we've pushed certain boundaries, like an extra sort of 10% this year, but I, I think the main thing is, now it's Netflix, and it's, it's 10 episodes as opposed to 22, it's a much kind of leaner, the story's much richer, it's, I mean, I've, I've watched it over the last couple of weeks, and I'm just really proud of this season, because I think it is the best season we've done here. on Netflix as well is that if there's an episode that needs a little more breath or a scene that needs to be just a little bit longer, instead of sticking to the formatted 42 minutes, Netflix will allow 43 minutes or 44 minutes and it allows for just that character to have that extra moment or that beat to have an extra minute and, it's, and it just will be more about the story instead of fitting the story into a certain length. Now we're, we're going to take some audience questions here in a second, so, uh, so get ready. But uh, just quickly, I just wanted to, to uh, congratulate you both on not just your incredible acting talents, but your, your musical talents as well. Thank you. I think that's one of, the, one of the things about the show is that, you know, music was a big part of my life when I was growing up because my mom was a music teacher. And, uh, you know, I played French horn, very sexy. Um, I was, you know, I grew up also in the church, uh, weirdly. Uh, 
and so I think I was singing. And yeah, isn't your dad a pastor? Yeah. Well, the irony. My dad and my uncle and my sister were pastors. Does, does he say my, my son is Satan? Does he say that? Again? Yeah, my son is Satan. Yeah, every day. <laughs> and Amy, you got to do some on that. Which episode was it? Like, I remember seeing you. Yes, well, on, well, we get to dance on the show, yes. which we were kids in a candy store. Like, literally, you guys, we had the Vegas showgirls for the first rehearsal around us, and Tom and I were like, I felt like I wanted a competition. And Tom's like, are you as excited as I am? I'm like, I'm so excited. Don't let German see us, because she will make so much fun of us, but we're both very excited. Um, Lauren plays Chloe on the show. But, um, yeah, I, um, well, I started as a dancer, and, um, you know, I did a bunch of musicals in school, but, but he's really, like, Tom's, Tom gets to really use those pipes, those Yeah, the kids also came about a little bit by accident, the singing on the show, because initially, you know, in the pilot, it was, uh, Lucifer had Lux, and it was a piano bar, and he played piano, and that was his thing, but, um, during the filming of season one, early on, we went out for a social in Vancouver, um, we may have had a few drinks, uh, and we ended up in a karaoke bar. <laughs> and uh, Joe and Ilgi, our showrunners, were there, and uh, I did my go-to uh, karaoke song, Mustang Sally. Uh, and, um, and they didn't know that we could sing, so they kind of were like, "Oh my God, you can sing!" And so they put it in the show, basically, and it, and it sort of grew from there. Amy, what's your karaoke song go to? Ooh, that's tough. Um, I think just friends in low places. All right, let's get some questions going from the audience. Where do we start? What's your name? What's your question, Logan? Hello. Nerdy, 
This is a real stretch for you, Mr. It's a real stretch, Tom. Uh, it is. <laughs> Try not to be sexy. It's very hard. I don't know. Um, but, um, geez. But, um, yeah, so it was just that. It was the fact that it was this professional um, girl in STEM who was goofy, nerdy, funny, and my gut, I went against went against my team and then they're like hold out to be the lead of something and then I said you know what I just really want to do her and I have a good feeling about the show and I just followed my gut. That's very cool. Yeah. I'm so happy. And to you too because you know you have to vet who you're about to join and I was like let's see this Tom Ellis what's he all about and I was like all right I can I can play ball with him he's fantastic he'll make me better. And Stop. It's true. I mean don't get a big head man. What's your name? Um, Tabby. What's your question? Um, firstly, I just want to say that you guys are both amazing, and Tom, you were beautiful. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I my, <laughs> my question is, what's the best part of being Lucifer? Uh, <laughs> well, honestly, I think the fact that I get to do so many different things, as you know, it's not often in a, in a show that you get to do so many like different things. I get to do like comedy, I get to do action, I get to do music, I get to do drama, I get to do romance, and those things are often like individually different parts along the way, but all in one all in one place. It's never really happened before. So I think that is, you know, I love going to work every day on this job. Uh, well, this one I call WikiLeaks. <laughs> what do you call me? 
Wikileaks. It's my new nickname for you because basically we're always taught not to give spoilers away. Because I always like to give nicknames to people, that's, you know, it's a very British thing to do. Uh, so I was like, we need a nickname, and she was like, well, you could call me Muffin Time. So she just came out of the Yeah, out of the and I was like, right, I'm going to call you Muffin Top. And, and uh, <laughs> she decided that she was going to call me Muffin Top as well, so we had that on our trailer doors in season one. And then that got shortened to Muffin. In, in the last season, I think we, we were, for some reason, decided we'd be called Muffinio. Which is Italian for muffin. I think. It's so funny. I actually thought you, when I first came on, they would call each other muffin top, and I'm like, God, I wonder if they have muffin tops. And I like just started looking. I'm like, no, they're in great shape. There's no muffin top. I was so. There's no, there's no rhyme or reason. <laughs> uh, but Lauren German is one of the funniest people I've ever met in my life. Um, which you don't always get across on screen because her character is kind of like the gravity of the show. Um, a she, prankster. Uh, yeah, she, oh, she's a prankster. Do you want to know another prank, by the way? A Lauren prank. <laughs> so it was my birthday and we had just recently filmed with an actor who... I, I, I like most people, but this person was really annoying. Uh, and uh, as part of his character in the show, the art department had to make a lot of life-size cardboard cutouts of him. Um, anyway, so a couple of months later, it was my birthday, and I go into my room, and I'm, I go into my trailer and I open the door and I'm like, whoa! And it was full of all of these life-size cutouts <laughs> of this guy. So I'm like, oh, that's hilarious, Lauren, you're so funny, so funny. So I get rid of them all, and then I go to my Wii in my tiny little toilet, and I'm like, whoa! <laughs> there was three more that she put out somehow. Um, but yeah. That's Lauren. She is very funny. <laughs> Who's next? What's your name? Coco. Oh, what's your question? Um, my question is actually for both of you. Um, what is the best burn that you can throw at Fox for canceling you? <laughs> Wow. 
to like music and play piano, but that guy kind of took it. Sorry. So my second question was, what was Tom Welling like in season three? Because I love Smallville, but it's uh, yeah, like maybe my dad's favorite show to watch, and I was just want to know what was it like being grown up? The Wellstar. <laughs> As in, he had me named T Dubs. He does. Also, yeah. there was one big Tom Tom. Tom. Yeah. So everyone was confused, like, which Tom? Which Tom do you need on set? And which Tom are you talking about? The, the tall, six foot three, dark hair one. Uh, no help. <laughs> um, I mean, Tom, I mean, he was great fun. He, uh, he really, he, he also is a person who likes to have fun at work, so he really embraces the atmosphere that we, that we worked in. And um, it's always nice, you know, we've done it each season, we bring someone new in and it's just a new sort of dynamic for us to all play around with, really. He's a big cuddly bear, isn't he? He really is. He's a big teddy bear and, um, you know, don't let the six foot three, who's taller? No, we're the same boy, that was the thing. Oh, really? I think initially they were looking for someone completely different and then they got called someone called Tom who was six foot three with dark hair and I was like, that's really different. <laughs> He does. There we go. That was it. I mean, you have dreamy brown eyes, okay? But, you know. Um, yeah, Tom is great. I actually just went to New Zealand with him to do the Comic Con out there and spent a lot of time with him. Um, and, and he's, he's just. He's just become a daddy as well, isn't he? Yes, he has. He has a little nugget. And, um, and honestly, he has the biggest heart. Like, he is just such a teddy bear. And. Um, and he gets lit, it's really cute. So this is really, I don't think he'll mind me saying this, but you know, Comic Cons can be, I'm a people person, you put me in wherever I can roll. And I and Tom's like, oh, I wouldn't be able to do that. He's like, I get a little bit like overwhelmed with a lot of people. He's like, I need just, so I thought that was very sweet that here's Superman, right? Playing like this iconic character. And he's like, I get a little overwhelmed sometimes. So I just thought it was very sweet that he really appreciated having someone there with him in New Zealand to kind of help navigate him. And so like, I tell you, big, big teddy bear that one. Now speaking of Tom, what did he do to your face in the last episode? What do you mean? Oh, we can't talk about that? Oh, you can. Um, I, I mean, it, that ties in with the kind of like self-realizing storyline that we were talking about. And, you know, Lucifer's devil face. Look at Lucifer's devil face right there, by the way. Oh my gosh. Right there. Just like my teeth. All I can see, I, I haven't got my lenses in, so all I can see is teeth. <laughs> Go, go say hi. I'll say hi. That is incredible. It's like a two hours to make. What's your name? Chrissy. How long did that take? Are you really hot? Yeah, it's like that in hell, so it's perfect. <laughs> Love it to meet you. Well done. Be sure to stop playing this on the celebrity. No, uh, basically killing, I mean, and this ties in with, the, with season four, I think. Lucifer killing Pierce uh, was the thing that made him, that made his self-realization bring his devil face back, basically. He started to, to really believe again that he was an evil person. All right. What's, uh, what's your name? Heidi. Heidi, what's your question? So, the show Lucifer is one of the first times we've seen Lucifer portrayed as a truly sympathetic character who just has a lot of daddy issues. <laughs> has it been awkward for you at all, considering that you've made millions of people fall in love with the devil? <laughs> I see that as job done, to be honest. <laughs> That was one of the things that I loved about this this take on the character was that uh, that you know the, the question is is he really truly evil or is he evil just because people decided he was because the notion I mean, we, again we touch on this this season that the notion that Lucifer was an angel um, and the only reason that you know people perceive him as being evil is because of what his dad did to him and the punishment he gave him um, I was really interested in exploring that who was the who was Lucifer before he was the devil. Um, and I think that, you know, uh, he's someone who had been denied all these things and, tr and mainly been denied love. Um, and the fact that, you know, he comes to a new place and even though he hasn't said it yet, I strongly believe he may be in love with a detective. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, that, you know, that, that brings out other things in him and I think that's why people 
relate to him. And I think there's a universal aspect that if the devil can be redeemed, yeah. then we all can. That's perfect. We have time for one last question. Look at you. <laughs> Sorry, I'm shaking. <laughs> it's fine. I love your outfit. Uh, my name's Tisha, and I was wondering, do you guys have a favorite scene that you've done? Favorite scene? Well, <laughs> I mean, there's lots, uh, lots and lots of funny scenes. I have to say, one, one of my favourite scenes we did was the scene where Ella is explaining the crime scene in a trip to Stabby Town. Which again, by the way, Lauren German. Yeah. We were, we were up against it, filming-wise, that day, and our, our director, Nathan, was kind of like, doing, you know, he was calling shots elsewhere. And we were like, we've got an opportunity here to do something a bit naughty. So, while we were waiting to go on set, Laura German took us to a different room and we basically decided to plot this scene out and how we would get away with what we got away with. Uh, and she was like, it's, it's just like you're doing the weather, you know, don't look at what you're doing. And Laura kept saying, she's like, get closer to his jump, get closer, closer, closer. And I'm like, sure, I'm really close. And she's like, closer. So the funniest thing is that Amy didn't realise that I put my hand on her head until she watched it. <laughs> it started like going all over Twitter and I was like this. I'm like, Tom, did you put your hand, hand on my head? And he's like, yep. What? Lucifer. Oh, yeah, Lucifer. The devil made him do it. <laughs> if, if, you, if you guys would please send the rest of the cast all the love that you're going to give us for you guys. And it's May, what's the name? May the 8th. 